I always say, if you can see it, you can imagine it. If you can imagine, you can create it. And now they can see themselves here and they can create whatever the hell they want, you know? Hi guys, how are you? Very well. Hi, very good, how are you? Good, good to talk to you. Um, Emma, I want to start with you because I feel like we know the least about your character at this point. <laughs> and what I understand is you are a drawer, an architect. What can you tell me about Erin and what might surprise audiences when they get to see you on screen? I think her, she's got her own sort of ambitions um, and her own wants and desires. And, and that, that's really exciting. She's not just the sister. She's got her own sort of life goals and everything. Um, yeah, and I, I'm excited to, to have people go on the journey with her because when we first meet her, it's very different to where she is at the end of the season. So okay. that's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it quiet. All right. Um, Ismael, I want to ask you, you know, you get to play Aaron Deer, the elf, and I know that means a lot to you, not just the role, but getting to play an elf. Um, what does it mean to you to be able to step into that role? The beauty of Tolkien is that we've all been able to arrive in this world from so many different avenues, all equally valid, all equally beautiful. And my route was less academic. You know, it was more life. When I first saw the movies um, back in Puerto Rico, um, you know, I was living in a very poor community in difficult circumstances, but in the mountains. So I know, saved my money, bought the DVDs, first DVD that we had in my house. Um, and I felt immediately identified with these beings. You know, spiritually, I've always been a lover of nature. My best friend, I always say, was a mango tree growing up. It's beautiful. Man. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story. It was like the giving tree. I was very, I was a very quiet kid and you know, kind of bullied. And I would always go at the end of the day in this beautiful tree that just kind of opened at the top. And I would do my homework at the top of the tree. It's kind of like in a little hill that we have. I have a picture. Um, wow. And it was, I had a very close connection with that. So I felt very elven, you know, when I saw it. But, but as you know, like there were no elves that looked like me in those in those works. So it became a like a, a dream that became more and more distant as I went, um, traversed through life. Suddenly, I get this audition, fought for it, was rejected a bunch of times. But I kept fighting for the role. Um, is a warrior, you know? And by this point, I. All these obstacles made me feel like one. So it was it was in many, many different ways it intersected and collided that um, I had to play this guy and I had to open up, you know, the the possibility for other people like myself to be here. Like I always say, if you can see it, you can imagine it. If you can imagine, you can create it. And now they can see themselves here and they can create whatever the hell they want, you know? Absolutely. Um now, Markella, I want to ask you, I know when you were 13, you got to meet Keith Urban, and that was a pretty big deal. Was there a moment in this just, whole experience? You this one, this one, this one. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing that you know that. Um, sorry, continue. My research. So I wanted to I wanted to ask if there's been a moment in this that is compared to that for you in terms of just being big. I mean, wow, I haven't thought about that in such a long time. Yeah, that was so that was unbelievably surreal. And I think um I've said this kind of a few times, but I genuinely think that it was for me visiting um, other sets, you know, so the show is really generous and the actors were often really generous as well, allowing us to go and visit um, people's sets sometimes. And just me thinking that I was purely an observer and like really objectively watching everyone and, and then having the thought of, wait, no. I also am doing something in this in some capacity. So, um, <laughs> That was, I think that was the, the quite a big realization for me um, in quite a moment, for sure. Okay, and Owen, I want to get to you too. You know, you get to work in Moria, which is beautiful on screen. How mm. much was that in terms of practicality versus visual effects? What was it like to be in that environment? Most of it was practical. So you can you step into a room and it was 360. You know there there wasn't there wasn't a, a fourth wall there. We, it was we were immersed in this cave, particularly um, uh, Durin's house with the fire behind him and the waterfall coming down and a tree in there. It was just outstandingly beautiful and couldn't be any uh, closer to Middle Earth than that than what was there. There are 
there's there's one particular scene, a, a lift scene that um, mm. myself and and Rob, who plays Eldrond, that that kind of goes up this 500 foot wall. So obviously we didn't have a 500 foot wall and ropes pulling us up there. Um, so watching that back and kind of sit and seeing how that all that fitted in was 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 quite special. But the lift itself was there. You know, I knew what I, I could touch the, the 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 walls of the lift and everything. And the rocks actually were it. There was a game a game we had um, where we'd go: is it real or fake in terms mm. of, in, ter in terms of rock? And we couldn't tell. It was fifty fifty. It was it was a you might as well have tossed the coin to kind of figure out what was real and what was not, which is amazing. Oh, it's a spectacular show. Thanks so much for your time, guys, and good luck with uh, the future of it, too. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our Narcity channel to see more content just like this.